a quick video on a fault in a friend's Bitex transceiver and how we fixed it. The receiver worked fine, but the transmitter didn't. No measured RF power output. You could still hear the transmission on a nearby receiver, but at a much lower level than my working Bitex. The bandpass filter in the Bitex is common to both receiver and transmitter. It comprises L3, L2 and L1. On transmit, the signal comes from the top end, L3 first. When we monitored the SSB signal on a nearby receiver, I put my finger and a metal screwdriver on the end of L3. That produced quite a strong signal in the receiver. Trying other points produced a reasonably strong signal until we got to the bottom end of L1. When the screwdriver was in this point, the signal still seemed to be quite strong. But when I put it on here, it was much weaker. So the first thing I did, thinking that the problem could either be L1 or C2, was to take L1 out of the circuit. Now just in case you're following this on your own Bitex, L1, L2 and L3 are just behind the relay, which goes from transmit to receive. We initially also suspected the relay, but if you look at the circuit carefully, there's no connection on transmit, so we discarded that as a problem. When we measured it on the LC meter, it came in a touch over 5 microhenry. A little bit different from the 6 microhenry specified, but we thought, well, 5 microhenry and 100 picofarad resonate on 7 megahertz, so it's going to be near enough. That coil in isolation couldn't have been the problem. Then we suspected C2. We tack soldered 100 picofarad from this point to L1, and that still seemed to have the problem of the low transmit power output. We then looked over the tracks of the circuit board. They seemed to be okay, including testing with a continuity tester. However, it still did seem odd that there is such a big drop in RF output between here and here. When you're repairing things and you reach a blank, it helps to look at the part of the circuit either side of the portion that you consider is suspect. In this case, we looked at the following stages. The next thing we did was make a drawing of the circuit board layout near the first transmitter RF amplifier transistor. We measured the voltage when in transmit mode. I'm not sure if you can see it highlighted, but the highlighted voltage numbers are those for the transceiver under test. The voltages that are not highlighted are with my working bit X. A major difference were the voltages around the base and the emitter. As you can see in the unit being repaired, a lot of the voltages were around 1 volt. Whereas in my own unit, the voltages around the base were 3.7 volts and the emitter 3.1. They are big differences and indicated that something was not quite right around that transistor RF amplifier. All the voltages around the driver stage were fine. The culprit turned out to be Q13, the first RF amplifier stage in the transmitter. It's a tiny surface mount thing, even smaller than resistors and capacitors, but eventually we were able to remove it and replace it with a BC548. The transmitter came to life, giving us its expected output power. Just to put these voltages into context, this is Q13. This is the signal that comes through from the bandpass filter. The faulty unit was reading one volt on both the base and the emitter. The collector was as normal, around 12 volts, whereas the good unit was 3.7 volts on the base and 3.1 volts on the emitter. If there isn't a voltage difference between the base and the emitter of a transistor amplifier circuit, then it's almost certainly not working. After doing the ceramic resonator mod to make it more stable, we got on the air and had several successful contacts, up to about a thousand kilometers distant. This has been a quick look at a successful repair to the bit X. Look at the circuit diagram and make measurements of voltages, 
It helps if you've got another working BitX that you can make comparisons against. If you want to get more from low power amateur radio, don't miss Minimum QRP. It's a Kindle ebook available for under $5 US. Just search the title on Amazon or visit my website vk3way.com. Or if antennas are more your thing, check out hand carried QRP antennas. Over 200 pages of practical antenna ideas for the portable or pedestrian mobile operator. Again, under $5 US and again via Amazon.